2017 will be the defining year for Microsoft and for Xbox as a whole in the gaming genre and gaming industry. Let me explain what I mean and why I say this. 2016 showed once and for all that PlayStation is miles ahead of Xbox miles ahead they currently hold in terms of consoles sold roughly a two to one advantage and that's not even taking into consideration the nintendo switch which will likely become a close competitor to the xbox one within a year's time if the current sales projections hold true that is worrying for Xbox because just a year ago, Nintendo was seen as a moot point, as somebody that really was inconsequential with regard to the top three in gaming, specifically PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Now, all of a sudden, the Switch is coming in and soon they'll be competing directly with Xbox in terms of market share. That should be worrying to them, and it is. Phil Spencer the head of Xbox. He's spoken to this point in multiple interviews, but he's putting all of his eggs in one basket, that basket being called the Xbox One Scorpio, or Project Scorpio, rather, but we're just throwing the Xbox One on it for the sake of consistency. Now, what is the Scorpio? What's it going to be? What can it do that the Xbox One S can't? What can it do that the PS4 can't? And what can it do that the PS4 Pro can't this question is the center of of this year's console debate it, it really will define xbox and where they go and where they fit in the larger gaming industry moving forward now phil spencer has taken a lot of strides and he is really banking on the scorpio and the play everywhere program to pay off the problem with this is that there are seeds of the Wii U and there are seeds of the PS4 Pro's failure already showing themselves. However, there are also signs that are good, and we'll get to each of those. Firstly, what do I mean by signs of the PS4 Pro's and the Wii U's failure? Each of those, the failure came with marketing. The Wii U was seen as simply an add-on to the original Wii. People didn't really connect that they were two different consoles, and so people just didn't buy it. They said, I don't need a controller with a screen in the middle of the joy sticks. Like, why would I need that? I I'm, I'm fine. So they never bought it, and they got distracted, moved on to other things, and then Nintendo just basically gave up. They gave up marketing. They, they gave up everything with it. They said, okay, we lost. We suck. Okay, we'll go work on the Switch. With the PS4 Pro, the problem came when they said, we're releasing this new powerful iteration of the PlayStation 4. But every game that you can play on your PS4, you can also play on your PS4 Pro and vice versa. There's no exclusives to one side or the other. This is not a new generation. This is just kind of like a big brother in case you want to play on your PS4 or on your 4K TV. Well, great. That's that's awesome. That's nice. I, I appreciate the fact that I don't need to buy a new console. It saves me a little cash. But in terms of actual marketing, it's a pretty stupid thing because you're giving consumers a pretty simple question, but the answer is usually against you. Consumers are looking at this and they say, well, I can pay $250 for a PlayStation 4, or I can pay $400 for a PS4 Pro. What's the difference between the two? Well, not the games. I get every game I want on the, the PS4 Pro, I can get on the PS4 and vice versa. Uh, the only thing I might get is a boost in resolution. And it's not even true 4K. It's this checkerboarded, fake 4K, simulated 4K. So uh, I'll, I'll just wait. Or I, I might not even have a 4K TV. The actual adoption rate of 4K TVs is not very high. So... It's just a moot point. People are saying, I don't even have a 4K TV. Why would I spend an extra $150 to get a console that doesn't do anything extra for me, at least right now? And this is where the Scorpio could potentially be heading. Now, the good thing is, though, that while Xbox initially was marketing the uh, Project Scorpio as the ultimate 4K gaming machine, clearly trying to go head-to-head -head with the PS4 Pro, since... 
the P, the public and the the marketing firms have realized that PS4 was or PS4 Pro was not as big of a success as they thought it would be. They've removed those mentions as the ultimate 4K gaming machine from their website. Now, many people thought this meant they were changing hardware or shifting things around. I don't think that's what it is. Of course, we'll probably not know until well after the release and and interviews come out. But what it likely means instead is that. Xbox realized that 4K was not in and of itself a selling point. People weren't willing to dish out five, six, seven hundred dollars for a brand new console just for 4K. It wasn't the selling point. What sold people on the, the PS4 Pro, if they bought it at all, was early adoption. The idea that in, eventually they would have a 4K TV. Eventually it would be worth the extra expense. They'll just get it now. And it's bragging rights. Why not? Um, but but <laughs> with the Project Scorpio, they have an opportunity. They have an opportunity to distinguish between the Xbox One S, the, the current version of the Xbox One, and the Scorpio. Will I Do I think that they'll do this? Yes and no. It's weird how Microsoft is handling this. Phil Spencer is starting this Play Anywhere program, right? And this Play Anywhere program is essentially meant to encourage people to buy games through the Xbox Store and through Microsoft's services. And then if you buy a game on your PC, you can also play it on your Xbox and vice versa. Share save files. That's the eventual goal. Problem is, and I've spoken to this before, it doesn't give players a reason to buy both. It, it just doesn't. It, console exclusives as lame or quote-unquote anti-consumer or whatever they are, they are incredibly crucial to selling and moving consoles. If you don't have exclusives, no one will buy your crap. When Xbox One initially came out, they had Rise, which to be fair, was very pretty. They had that sunshine, sunset boulevard, whatever it was called. I can't even remember. That's how memorable it was, which was cool for like a month and a half. And it was kind of fun and lighthearted, but it was quickly forgotten. And they, of course, have Halo. They've got those games. But really, there weren't any major genre-defining exclusives. With the PS4... Sony's been incredibly intelligent in how they've approached this. Sony looked at it and they said, listen, console exclusives are going to be important. So let's get Naughty Dog on our side. Let's get all these different companies on our side. Let's get Studio uh, Santa Monica on our side. Let's get all these companies working for us so that we can come out with a God of War complete redesign from the ground up. People are going to be super excited for. Let's announce The Last of Us Part Two." which The Last of Us was a console-selling game initially, they said, okay, well, let's get Until Dawn as well, which p players like PewDiePie and Markiplier are going to have a great time with, and that's going to sell the console. And let's also get, like, uh, just game after game after game, they weren't just empty games. They weren't just like, oh, well, yeah, this is a, a fourth or fifth sequel to the initial game that found a little success. Um, you know, there you go. It, it hasn't been like that. And they followed through, most importantly. Xbox has announced exclusives in the past, and the, they seem to all get canceled somehow. It's bizarre. Fable Legends, or whatever it was called, got canceled after just uh, even a few months of, of speculation on where it was. And time and again, time and again, game and again, game and again, they keep getting canceled. And I don't know if that's an internal structural thing or what, but Xbox seems to be unable to deliver those those console exclusives that would actually move consoles. Uh, but they are, once again, banking on this Play Anywhere idea, which I am currently predicting will not really work, at least in terms of Xbox, and actually selling consoles because again it doesn't give players a good enough reason um saying oh well you basically are buying two games you buy it for your pc or your console well players either have a pc or they have a console few players have both and if they buy both they're buying 
both because there's some sort of exclusives, right? So if you already have a gaming PC, you've spent a lot of money on it. You spent a lot of time working on it. You have upkeep and you, you have a lot of uh, fancy peripherals and all that. But why would you go and spend another three, four, five hundred dollars on a console to play the same game you can play at an even better resolution, better frame rates on your PC. It doesn't make any sense. So nobody would buy the console. And if they're on the console, why would they need to go dish out the money to buy it for PC when they could, after all, just play it on on their Xbox? Why would they, they bother with all this? It's just inherently stupid marketing, in my opinion, and um, in the opinions of, of many other marketing people in general. It just doesn't seem to really be working for them. Now, my guess is that there's another key component to this which we're just not aware of, which is incredibly, incredibly likely. They've been switching their marketing campaigns. They've been switching up here and there. So it's very likely that there's some element to this that we aren't aware of and that we don't know yet and we'll find out probably around e3 but what we can say right now definitively is that 2017 will be the defining year for xbox it'll be the year that they can either come back swinging against playstation and take back a market share say no we are going to get to the top of this generation even still we're going to demolish you with the scorpio or they'll announce this it'll be kind of a Blah, release it'll do okay and then xbox will just be stuck in a permanent third place uh or worse and have nowhere to go hey did you like that well that was just an extra of the full show that i do every single weekend so if you haven't seen it yet then you got to make sure to check it out links popping up everywhere in the description box as well and subscribe if you haven't already to become a member of the bowel movement